It's time to start putting our design together. To do this, I want to mirror the wheel we just created, and I need a plane to do this with. I'm able to select a work plane and the mid plane generation option to put it between the two faces in the caster. I'll select the body of the wheel from the browser and use our new plane as the mirror plane. We can just simply shut all the construction items off with a simple click of the light bulb in the browser. Now I'd like to see some of the other components in my assembly. I'll turn the seed on and the base on, and when I zoom out, they're visible, but obscured by the fact that we still have our caster core as the active component. To connect bodies together, we use joints. We can select various points, various edges on a component, and we can make connections between components using different types of joints. In this case, I'll pick the rounded edge at the top of the caster base, and then at the bottom of the stand. I can pick different types of joint, for example a slider. I can choose which axis is a degree of freedom for that joint. I can choose a different type of joint. And it will show me the degree of freedom that's available for various axes. What I want to end up with is a revolute joint. And I want to make sure I select the correct axis. I'll select the Z axis and you can see that our caster will be able to spin about the Z axis. That looks good. Seems to be performing well. Now I need more than one of these casters so once again I'll just go to the pattern tools. I'll say that I want a circular pattern and I can select my caster from the browser and use the stem from the chair as my axis. Drag out the number of casters that I want. Of course I need five and I'm finished with that step. You'll see in the browser that it's added additional casters. Now before we can put the seat in place it needs a way to be held in place. We need to do a little bit of modeling. So I'll take the seat base, isolate it, so that it's the only thing on the screen. Now, it's not wholly necessary to activate this because the type of feature that I want to add to it can only be added to one type of geometry at a time. I'll add a thread to this. I don't need the thread to be full length. I'll just drag out a length for now and set the type of thread that I want. I want the metric trapezoidal thread. I'll make sure it's the right designation, but I want this to be modeled. Not just a representative, but a modeled thread. For rapid prototyping, this is critical. Most 3D CAD systems only give you a representative thread. Fusion 360 gives you a physical thread. So this can be printed and other objects with a negative thread can be screwed together. So let's go back to our component. We'll once again right click and from the context menu say unisolate and that will bring our other components back on screen. Now I can apply a joint between my seat stem and the base. And a revolute joint is good, but it's not exactly what I need. I really want a cylindrical joint. A cylindrical joint will allow the body to slide in one axis and rotate about that same axis. I'll set an offset to pre-position my seat 50 millimeters above where the joint was created. This helps my model look far more accurate. Though our chair has a very simple mechanism, I want to use a motion study to be able to show others how this will work. You can model the motion of very complex mechanisms using this process. First, I'll select the cylindrical joint. There are two potential movements in the cylindrical joint, the linear motion and the rotational motion. I'll set an offset to represent my maximum travel for my linear motion. I'll allow this to pause by selecting the same distance later on in the timeline. 
and then I'll select another point to return it back to its original position in linear motion. Now I can select the timeline for the rotational motion and set a value. I'm not 100% sure which way I need this to spin, so I'll just plug in a value that will allow it to rotate two times completely. When I click play, I realize that my rotation is backward. I can correct this very easily by just selecting the point and putting a minus symbol at the beginning of it to reverse the direction. And you'll see, not surprisingly, they line up with one another. Maybe I should have taken that as a hint in the first place. Let's go ahead and hit play. Now I know my assembly is complete and ready to be shared with others.